today in this class what I am just going to do is I will be providing you some important notes with respect to factoring and then we start solving some important questions over here. So, let us quickly first write some important notes. So, write important notes if the question uses the language like the factor agrees to buy the receivables of the firm or the firm sells its receivables to the factor then it is implied that all risks and rewards associated with receivables have been transferred to the factor this implies that the factoring is on non recourse basis let us move ahead and continue writing further generally in a factoring arrangement the factor might recover fees and interest upfront that is at the beginning of the arrangement in such case the factor will reduce the amount to be advanced by such upfront fees and interest sometimes there may be an offer of advance by bank and the firm has to decide whether to accept the arrangement offered by the factor or the advance offered by the bank. Let us move ahead and take up a question that will be question number 18. Let us read this question annual sales of A limited all on credit is rupees 1 crore 32 lakhs the company offers 2 months credit to its customers currently bad debts are 1.5 percent of total credit sales the cost of collection incurred by the company is rupees 20,000 per month the company is thinking of appointing a factor who would make collections from the debtors of the company by charging 4 percent fees the factor is also willing to advance 80 percent of the receivables at interest rate of 18 percent per annum you are required to determine the effective annual cost of factoring under the following cases case 1 interest and fees charged by factor at end of each cycle and case 2 says interest and fees charged at the beginning of each cycle. So, uh, here we have something important to be discussed before we start attempting the solution to this question. Fact number 1 if you read this question the question does not convey anywhere that uh, whether the factoring is on a recourse basis or non recourse basis absolutely no hints given when this is the scenario I am strongly recommending you to follow one thing you always assume that the factoring is on a non recourse basis do not assume recourse factoring if you have to make an assumption always go for a non recourse factoring I will give you a logic behind that when I am giving responsibility of making collections to the factor and if the factor is given a recourse arrangement mostly what will happen factor will not be putting complete 100 percent efforts of making collection because the factor knows that if any bad debt arises the factor does not have to bear the loss of bad debt therefore the factors efforts will not be 100 percent that is a general understanding therefore if the question tells you that it is a recourse factoring applied as a recourse factoring if it is non recourse factoring applied as non recourse factoring sometimes question tells you that the factor is buying the firms receivable the language used in the question will be the factor is buying the firms receivables or it can be conveyed to you this way that the firm is selling its receivable do you understand when you sell your asset to someone all the risks and rewards attached with that assets are passed on to the buyer in that case if there is any non recovery it will be the factor who will bear the loss that means it is implied that it is a non recourse arrangement however if you once again have a glance at this particular question in exam if you get a question like this your default assumption should be that it is a non recourse factoring though you are free to take any assumptions we would want to match our assumptions with what type of assumptions are taken by ICAI in examination as a result we would try to consider this scenario as if it is a case of a non recourse factoring. Now what is other thing in this question they have asked you this question in two different scenarios one where the fees and interest 
it is collected at end of each cycle the way we have been doing. But the second case given over here that second case is little different here the factor is recovering the interest and fees for that cycle at the beginning of that cycle. Therefore, your calculations obviously will go little different. So, here you have to be little more alert when it comes to case 2, but case 1 is as usual as you have been learning. So, let us see how to put up the solution for case 1 and then we will deal with case 2. So, when you start your solution with case 1, you just write the heading case 1 interest and fees charged by the end of each cycle. So, under this heading case 1, you will first write the calculation of average balance of debtors that will be 1 crore 32 lakhs of total annual credit sales into 2 by 12 because the credit period is 2 months that gives you 22 lakhs as the average balance of debtors and amount advanced by the factor will be 80 percent of this average balance of debtors that will be 17 lakh 60 thousand. Let us move ahead and deal with the later part of the solution cost of factoring for the year we begin with the factor fees that will be 4 percent of 1 crore 32 lakhs mind it we are making this calculation for the entire year rate of interest is 18 percent per annum applied on 17 lakh 60 thousand and what you get is 8 lakh 44 thousand 800 as aggregate of these two factors you will subtract the savings in bad debts because the factoring has been assumed on a non recourse basis and savings in administration and collection cost will be 2 lakh 40 thousand and the net annual cost comes to 4 lakh 6 thousand 800 annual effective cost of factoring comes to 23.11 percent. Let us move ahead with the next part of the solution where we begin with case 2 interest and fees charged by the factor upfront. So, average balance of debtors will be first computed in the usual manner average balance of debtors will be 22 lakhs. Now, amount eligible for advance will be 80 percent of 22 lakhs that is 17 lakhs 60 thousand. However, the factor is not going to give you this time that amount of advance. So, what factor will do is will collect the fees and interest upfront. So, first of all important thing over here is you will be finding that factor is collecting the fees charged by the factor upfront, but here when you consider the fees charged by factor upfront or the interest charged by the factor upfront do not go for the total annual calculation because when it is an upfront collection you will find that factor is collecting the fees upfront and at the beginning of each cycle the factor is making this adjustment with the amount of advance. So, it will not happen that factor will first give you advance and then collect upfront fee from the amount eligible for advance the factor will be deducting the fees as well as interest, but this deduction will be made for each cycle that precaution you have to take do not make the calculation for the entire year. So, in the screen what you find over here is amount eligible for advance is 17 lakh 60 thousand. Now, you need to compute the factor fee at the rate of 4 percent not for the entire year, but for one cycle. So, for one cycle that is one round of sale your average debtors balance currently is 22 lakhs you have given responsibility of collection of 22 lakhs. So, factor will be charging 4 percent of 22 lakhs 4 percent of 22 lakhs will be what 88,000. So, you will be subtracting the amount of factor fee as 88,000 and when you get the balance amount it is 16 lakhs 72,000 this is the amount that the factor will be actually giving to you 16 lakhs 72,000. However, you will compute interest on this amount and factor is going to recover even the interest also upfront. So, first of all you will have to compute interest on this. So, how to make that calculation let me show you in details over here. First of all we have landed up at the amount of uh, advance which the factor would have been willing to give after deducting the factor fees that is coming to 16 lakh 72 thousand. Let us compute the interest charge by factor for this one cycle that will be 16 lakh 72 thousand 
into 18 percent as interest rate and one cycle is of two months so into 2 by 12 that gives you 50,160 that will be also subtracted by the factor upfront and the actual amount advanced by the factor will be 16,21,840. Let us move ahead and what we do now is we make the calculation of cost of factoring for the year considering this change. So, the factor fees for the entire year will be 5,28,000 anyway. However, the interest charge by factor under this case will be little different. It will be 18 percent of 16,72,000 and the aggregate of that comes to 8,28,960. From this you will subtract the savings in bad debts and the savings in administration and collection cost. These two figures will not change, but the final amount will obviously change because of some changes in the interest. And another point of precaution when you are going to compute the final net annual effective cost of factoring as a percentage you will have to again take care of one thing please understand this point very well you have computed interest on the base of 16,72,000 but when the factor has actually advanced money to you the factor has even deducted interest so when you are at the last stage of your calculation that is effective annual cost of factoring indicated as a percentage the denominator in the calculation will not be 16,72,000 but it will be the actual amount advanced the way I am showing you here on the screen just be careful when you are making this calculation this is the main crux in this type of question. So, let me explain this uh, whole thing once again when it comes to case 2. So, what did you write? Now, writing work is already done. Just try to pay attention over here. Case 2, the heading for case 2 is what? Interest and fees charged by factor upfront. So, first of all, this calculation, average balance of debtors, it does not change at all. But what will change is from this amount of uh, eligible amount for advance you will find this is 80 percent of 22 lakhs that is 80 percent of your average debtors balance and that is 17 lakh 60 thousand. Now from this amount you will first subtract the factor fees. What is the logic behind subtracting the factor fees? Simple point is the factor is advancing you how much money? Factor is advancing you an amount of say 17,60,000 then the factor should charge interest on 17,60,000 but factor is supposed to recover the fees after the job is done but factor is charging upfront fees of 88,000. So, you would say that dear factor if you are giving me advance you are charging interest on that if you are collecting your fees in advance even I will charge interest on that that is why the interest will be charged on the net basis. So, net amount on which the interest will be computed that will be 16,72,000 that is the amount eligible for advance minus the factor fees. So, 16,72,000 is the base of calculation from this amount I repeat from this amount you have to compute the interest. So, when you compute interest on 16,72,000, it is 16,72,000 into 18 percent into 2 by 12 that is interest for that cycle. Because the arrangement has been planned this way that the factor will be collecting interest also upfront. So, what is happening? The base for computing the interest is 16,72,000, but the actual amount advanced will be 16,21,840. As a result, when you are going to compute the effective cost of factoring at the end, it will be 16,21,840 that will become the base. So, as if you know you are trying to find the ultimate cost of this kind of borrowing or ultimate cost of debt and when you compute the cost of debt, the denominator is always the amount of net proceeds after deducting everything what money you received your cost calculation has to be based on that. So, 
couple of things you have to keep in your mind whenever the factor is collecting the fees and interest upfront how will you approach the calculation this working is very important for this purpose you find the average balance of debtors subtract the amount of reserve what the factor is maintaining or whatever be the proportion of advance like in this case it is 80 percent apply 80 percent and find the amount eligible for advance which in this case was 17 lakh 60 thousand then what you do is compute the factor fee for that one cycle subtract that also because the fee was collected up front then the final net amount will be the base amount for computing interest compute interest on that amount and subtract that interest also then you will get to know what is the amount which is actually advanced to the firm by the factor once you compute this final amount of advance the actual net advance that will become the base at the last calculation when you are computing the effective annual cost of factoring so that was the required explanation and once you have completed this whole thing we will be moving ahead and uh, this whole calculation this whole calculation if you see the base of interest calculation was different this time that was one difference and another difference was this annual net cost was the numerator and the denominator was the net amount of proceeds that is the net amount of advance actually received by the firm from the factor and that results to 24.11 percent so your factoring arrangement becomes a little more expensive if the factor starts collecting the money upfront because of the factor of time value of money you know collecting that same amount at end of the cycle and collecting the same amount at beginning of the cycle when the factor is collecting the same amount at beginning of the cycle the factoring arrangement becomes little more costly so i'm sure you are through with this entire solution